This video is a continuation of uh, talking about graphs of normal probability distributions, but specifically we're going to be taking a look at something called the empirical rule. And again, I'm going to make you a, a drawing of this, but if you want a more precise um, and nicer labeled drawing, you can certainly take a look in your book and it, it will have the same graphic, um, but represented perhaps a little bit more nicely. So um, here is our nice normal bell curve shape. And we know from what we've already talked about that the graph will be centered at the mean mu. And then typically we measure the graph going out in tick marks of standard deviation. So this would be mu minus sigma, mu minus 2 sigma, and mu minus 3 sigma on the left hand side. This is going to be mu plus sigma, mu plus 2 sigma, and mu plus 3 sigma on the right hand side. And what the empirical rule says specifically is that if we're looking at how much data is in between mu minus sigma and mu plus sigma, how much is in between just one standard deviation on either side of the mean, that's actually a big chunk of the data. It is by no means the um, vast majority of the data, but it is over half of the data actually that falls within one standard deviation on either side of the mean. Specifically, it is approximately, according to the empirical rule, 68% that fall within one standard deviation on either side of the mean. If we go out to two standard deviations on either side of the mean, so that would be here to here, so we're talking about between these endpoints here and here, now we can see we really do have the vast majority of the data. There is very little data out in these tails on either side. That amounts to approximately 95% by the empirical rule, so 68 on one side, or one standard deviation, 95% within two. And if we go out to three standard deviations, now we're really talking about the bulk of the data, right here to here, okay, all the way out to there. Very minuscule amount of data in either of those tails past three standard deviations. So that works out to 99.7%, almost all of the data um, in a data set that follow a normal distribution will be found within three standard deviations on either side of the mean. This, by the way, gives us a really nice um, place to look for outliers. If we're finding something beyond uh, those three standard deviations, it would certainly be construed as an outlier. Um, some people will actually go with two and a half if you find a data point beyond two and a half standard deviations from the mean, either below or above, that that could be construed as an outlier. Okay, so here's what we know from the empirical rule. Now, interestingly enough, we can be a little bit more specific <coughs> excuse me, than just looking at these percentages here. For example, 68% has to fall within one standard deviation on either side of the mean, by definition. Now, if we take that 68%, and by virtue of the fact that it has to be distributed evenly on both sides, because this is a symmetric distribution, we know that that means that there's 34% between one standard deviation below the mean and the mean. There would also be 34% between the mean and one standard deviation above the mean, because that 68% has to be split evenly on both sides. To find out how much is between here and here, two standard deviations below the mean and one standard deviation below the mean, or similarly, one standard deviation above and two standard deviations above, how much is in those little segments. We would first need to find the difference between the 95% here and the 68% here. So if we take 95 and subtract 68, we find a value of 27%. That would be split evenly on both sides. So we'd be looking at 13.5% in here and 13.5% in here. We can pull that same trick again. So 99.7 minus 95. And when we do that, we get a value of 4.7. Divide it by 2, 
So there's 2.35% in here and 2.35% in here. And then all that's out in these tails past that, beyond three standard deviations in either direction, only represents 0.3% of the data, right? Because it's 99.7% out to there, so it would be 0.3% beyond that. If we divide that in two, we're talking about 0.15%. So there's 0.15, whoops, 0.15% of the data beyond three standard deviations in this direction, and 0.15% of the data beyond three standard deviations in that direction. So it is very, very minuscule. Okay, so the empirical rule, really the empirical rule itself only covers these three percentages, 68% within one standard deviation, 95 within two, 99.7 within three. But we can get a lot more information out of the empirical rule. So how are we going to use this? We're going to use the empirical rule to find uh, various probabilities when we know that the data that we're dealing with follow a normal distribution. So let's take a look at an example of how to do that. So let's talk about IQ scores. Uh, IQ scores are one thing that we know actually follows a normal distribution model because that's how the IQ test is designed. And specifically, we know that um, IQ test scores follow a normal distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Okay, so here's what we know. And let's say I was interested in finding out what is the probability that a person selected at random will have an IQ between 70 and 130. So that's what I'm interested in. Okay, first of all, we need to notice that the problem did stipulate that we're dealing with a normal distribution. If nothing in there talks about the data being normal or mound-shaped and symmetric or anything like that, then we really have no reason to assume that we can use our bell curve shape and therefore the empirical rule to model this particular circumstance. Okay, but as long as that is in there, normal distribution or mound shaped and symmetric or unimodal and symmetric, something like that, we know we can go ahead and use a normal model here. Now, certainly you don't have to draw uh, or make a sketch of the normal distribution, but many people find this to be very helpful. We know that this nice middle point of the bell curve it occurs at the mean. So in this case, we had a mean of 100. And then we label outward from the mean in terms of units of standard deviation. So for instance, if I go one standard deviation above the mean, that would represent 100 plus 15, which would be 115. Two standard deviations above the mean, we would add another 15 on, that'd be 130. And this would be 145. When we go below the mean, 100 minus 15 would be 85, minus another 15 would be 70, minus another 15 would be 55. And so there are our labels. And we can see here, because it's asking us for the probability that a person being selected at random is going to have an IQ between 70 and 130, I can see that that is within two standard deviations on either side of the mean. And according to the empirical rule, I would expect 95% of individuals to be within that range. So the probability that a single person select at random, selected at random will have an IQ between 70 and 130, we're expecting that to be a 95% chance of occurrence. <coughs> Excuse me, based on the empirical rule. 
Okay, certainly we could use this to do a variety of other things, especially once we have our graph drawn and labeled. Um, if we wanted to know, for example, what is the probability that a person, again, selected at random, has an IQ between 115 and 145. So we're curious about that. Well, 115 and 145, we're looking at here and here. So from here to here. And technically, the empirical rule doesn't say anything about this directly. It's concerned with, you know, one standard deviation on either side of the mean, two standard deviations on either side, three standard deviations on either side. But because of those additional labels we were able to put on the empirical rule, we know some of these subdivisions of percentages. So here, this area represents one standard deviation above the mean to two standard deviations above the mean. So that's between here and here. We're looking at 13.5% in there. And then the next portion is between here and here, two standard deviations and three standard deviations. That's 2.35% is what's, you know, in, in here. And when I add those together, I'm going to have, what is that, 15.85%. So there's my probability of somebody falling within that particular range. As just a third example, let's say we wanted to know what's the probability that a person selected at random has an IQ below 100. Again, the empirical rule doesn't answer this directly, but it does give us enough information to answer it. So here's 100. Below 100 will be starting at 100 and going all the way to the left. Well, that's half the distribution. That's exactly 50%. Okay, there's a 50% chance of that occurring. And this is one of the ways that we can apply the empirical rule. What we'll be looking at in some of the uh, next videos that you'll take a look at is how can I find these percentages if the values that I'm interested in don't fall on nice whole numbers of standard deviations? So what if I wanted to know what the percentage of individuals um, having IQs between 108 and 125? How would I find that out since they don't fall on these nice boundary values?